everyone. I'm Faye Lin, Senior Editor of Technology at Gen, and I'm coming to you from Seattle at the Institute for Protein Design at the University of Washington with Nobel Laureate David Baker. Hello. Hey, Hi. How's it going? It's so so great to be here in Seattle, and uh, you know, it's Nobel, it's Prize Announcement Week, and Seattle certainly has had uh, been on a roll in Nobel Prize winners. We know Mary. Bronco just won the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine for for T regs and the role in, in immune tolerance and you really feel the the energy here in terms of the the powerful science in Seattle and and at the IPD very excited to talk more about protein design a year after the Nobel how David how have the community been talking about protein design the investment the broader audience that's been reached after the Nobel you know what's what's protein design like these days? Well, it's, it's getting more and more exciting. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was really on the lunatic fringe, the idea that if you wanted to make a new protein function, you would design it from scratch rather than starting from a native protein. And now that's becoming more and more, um, it's no longer on the lunatic fringe. In fact, um, almost every day I read about another company starting up to, um, de novo design proteins for, you know, for some purpose. So I'd say it's, entered the mainstream, which is kind of crazy to me. <laughs> so, um, and you know, in the lab, it's been really, really fun. We've been, um, uh, you know, with the deep learning methods that we've been developing, we can solve harder and harder problems. And so, you know, every week or so, there's some new problem that longstanding problem that's getting cracked. So it's a really exciting time. And protein design certainly is uh, definitely reaching out, you know, you mentioned industry and, and just so many companies these days launching, covering specifically protein therapeutics. Uh, there's also a lot of conversations happening about hype, reality, particularly around de novo design, proteins from scratch. So what would you say to the community about uh, how to think about those questions, hype, reality, when it comes to protein? Right. Design? Well, I think the reality is that we can now design new functional proteins on the computer. And for things like antibody design, it's becoming, I, th I believe that within two or three years, it will be the industry standard approach. I think, um, uh, and I think enzyme design, I mean, you spoke to a couple of people today that have made really big breakthroughs in enzyme design. I think we're going to see, um, you know, de novo design is the standard way to make catalysts for new chemical reactions. Uh, generally for, I think that'll be true for things like binders, for sensing, even for things like protein sequencing, de novo design, I think will be very useful. So I think across a wide range of applications, I think the reality is that de novo design is already or will soon uh, be, the, the, be the method of choice, at least be competitive with other methods. Now, the hype is that for things like therapeutics, there's a lot more than just the, the basic activity of the protein, you know, binding to something or catalyzing a chemical reaction or, um, uh, you know, it's the, the body is a very complicated place. And so whether these de novo design proteins are going to revolutionize medicine is a bigger question because we, there, a lot of the problem is understanding the biology. Like if we understand, and, and de novo design doesn't really help you at least directly understand the biology of health and disease. And so I think that's where, um, there's some hype. I think also there's there's been a lot of progress in using deep learning to um, uh, to design protein structure, design proteins to predict protein structure, and that's really built off the protein structure data bank, which has been you know was you know forty or fifty years in the making, you know tens of billions of dollars, tens of thousands of people putting it together. So the question is really how fast will deep learning transform, you know, biology moving up the complexity ladder. Um, and there we don't really know. It's a problem I'm really very excited about now. We're starting to work on that. And there are, um, there's a lot of excitement in the world today, but how good AI math models of the cell, how good those will be at actually making non-trivial predictions is still an open question. And it certainly has been, the field moves so fast and then yeah. we certainly are feeling this inflection point in, yeah. in machine learning, AI, uh, et cetera. Uh, what do you see in the next five to 10 years, which we, we've already seen so much change since the release of AlphaFold um, a few years ago. Where, where do you see protein design going in the next five or 10 years? 
Well, I think protein design will, as I said, become, I think it will become really the mainstream method of choice for things like antibody design, enzyme design, um, and basically designing new protein functions. Um, and again, whether it transforms medicine or not depends on a little bit on our improvement in understanding the biology and mechanism in, in, at a at sort of a higher level of complexity. Um, and then just more generally for deep learning in biology, whether we'll be, ha be able to develop predictive models that, you know, describe what will happen if you add a particular small molecule to a cell or, um, or, or even an, um, an organism, you know, sort of models of higher levels of biological function. Um, it's a little bit hard to predict right now. And again, I think a limiting thing is the data. There are, one of the things that was really neat about the protein structure database is there was a, a agreed upon central database and people really devoted their lives to curating it and deciding on standards and the whole community bought in. So as we move up the biological complexity ladder, there are a lot of data sets, but it's much less standardized. And, um, and it's somewhat siloed, you know, every company will have its own data set. And so I think it'll depend a little bit on the ability, you know, the willingness of researchers and companies to pool data into, um, uh, you know, into publicly accessible sets. These training deep learning models requires really a ton of data. I mean, just to give a feeling for it, there are about 200,000 protein structures in the PDB. Each one of those has um, many thousands of atoms. And for each one of those atoms, you know the X, Y, Z coordinates to considerable precision. So if you think about the number of bits of information in one structure, it's very, very large. Whereas most data sets in biology are, are much, um, are, have, have much less information content. So we'll need much larger numbers, you know, in the millions or tens of millions or hundreds of millions of data sets. And they also have to be really span a wide range of diversity. So it's a long winded answer to saying that I think the limit that where, as far as how will deep learning be able to, will, how will we be able to model things beyond protein structures and molecular interactions um, will depend on sort of the quality of, and of the data sets that can be generated. Yeah, absolutely. I think data is absolutely crucial to any conversation about yeah. machine learning these days. So excited to see where the field goes and uh, how, how we can expand upon public data sets uh, like the yeah. TDP. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. Well, this has been such a great conversation, David. Uh, thanks so much for spending the time. And if you're here in the in the audience uh, and want to see more content on AI from Jen, make sure to check out the State of AI and Drug Discovery streaming on October 29th. David here was our inaugural keynote for our 2024 event, and we're, we're thrilled to have another phenomenal program uh, with key players, Zero Therapeutics, which David co-founded, NVIDIA, Recursion, ARC Institute, so many more. So please uh, register. Link is in the show notes and hope to see you there. So till then, thanks, David. Okay, well, thank you. All right.